Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm actually doing a test of video quality, so if you could let me know in the comments below how this looks, um, that would be really helpful for me because I am, um, I'm just trying a different, um, a different way of recording to see if it looks better. So I figured I'd do a simple project because I have all the supplies out because I just made my daughter a duct tape wallet and I thought, well, I'll just make another one because they're handy to have on, you know, to have around if someone's like running out of the house but they don't want to take their purse, they just need a wallet they can tuck in their pocket. It's just great to have one of these uh, hanging around that you can hand somebody because uh, you don't always want to have a purse with you. So you can use any duct tape for this. These are a couple duct tapes I picked up at the Dollar Tree for a dollar and you know, it's a good amount of tape on there. I think it's like maybe 10 yards. Um, I will say the duck brand duct tape is higher quality. It's also uh, more expensive, um, but for a wallet, something like this, it's not going to take a lot of wear and tear. So, um, I mean, the, the duck brand duct tape is a little bit thicker and a little bit stickier, but for this project, it makes no difference what product you use. And if you're going to make a bunch of these and practice and have fun, I would say go for the, go for the cheap stuff until you um, really know what you're doing. So I thought I would do like a two-toned um, wallet. I like to do a different pattern on the inside and on the outside. And the first thing you need to do is make some duct tape fabric. And so to do that, I'm working on a non-stick uh, craft mat. You want to pull off about eight to 10 inches of tape. You're going to end up like a seven inch wallet, but this way if things aren't perfectly lining up, it's not going to cause you any problems. And what you do to make duct tape fabric is you stick down a piece and then you're going to pull off another piece. And I find this stuff tears just fine. I mean, there might be other cheaper brands that aren't that great, but uh, I've, I've been pleased with the stuff I get at the Dollar Tree. Um, it's only a buck. Um, I will link to the website if you don't have a Dollar Tree nearby. You would be taking a, a little bit of a gamble because, you, you know, you would get like an assorted amount, like an assorted box of patterns. So I have no idea what they would send you. I've only bought it in store, but that's an option. Now what I should do is, you know what, I think I can probably peel this up and line it up so my patterns line up, kind of like you were sewing. Why don't you do that? So I'm working on a non-stick mat so that I can adjust if I need to. And I want to overlap this first um, side of my duct tape fabric. Oh, shoot. Um, by about a, oh, between eighth and a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch is for like probably the, the best idea. You might have to overlap a little bit more to match your pattern up exactly. That's about a quarter of an inch, I would say. And that way we can have a nice continuous pattern. And then you can decide when you're making your wallet, which side you want to feature. So you might lose a little bit more depending on where you tore your, um, where you tore your tape. You might even want to go a little bit longer with your strips if you're afraid that you might not be able to match the pattern, but it's a pretty foolproof design. So what you want to do is make a piece of duct tape fabric that's about eight inches by eight inches and you you know so that you have room to trim and once we get this side done I will show you what to do next this is doesn't matching up it's this is I think this is gonna be the inside so I'm not too worried about it so I'm gonna finish up this well you know what I'll let it roll I only got one more strip to put down there anyway I hope this looks all right <laughs> if not I might I don't know if I've done another duct tape wallet project before. Whoops, I got this one turned under. So this is something you want to be careful of is getting um, getting a fold over because if this folds over on itself it's really difficult to unstick. We might be able to but if, if that happens just stick it onto your craft mat out of the way because you can use this if you need need it for adhesive. So I'm just going to stick this out like just on my craft mat out of the way so that I can use it if I need it later. So just keep carrying on and making this um, this side of your paper. Okay, now I've got this um, portion done. What I'm going to do is flip it over and you don't have to worry that it's not perfect. I did end up taking that piece with the turned over part and put that on the bottom because that'll get cut off. I don't have to worry about that. So when you peel it off, you wanna peel it from the top so that you don't peel your layers apart. And even on a non-stick mat, it can, it can stick a little bit, so. You want to go kind of carefully. And sometimes you kind of have a roll, uh, like a little bowl of water, so that you can um, dip your fingers in if you feel like you're getting really stuck to the tape because it will. Uh, it will stick to you. There we go. And so then what I want to do is flip it over, but this is how we stuck it down. So the strips of tape are going that way. I'm gonna turn it. Okay, and flip it this way. And this is going to make the strongest duct tape fabric because um, we're going to be having our strips of tape go 
um, the opposite way so you get that super duper strength. And for this side, I'm going to use the leopard print duct tape. And I think this is what I'm going to end up being the outside of the wallet. Um, I'll just determine that um, when I'm done. But basically, I just want to stick this down at a 90 degree angle. Make sure I just pull off a piece that's wide enough. Actually, I think my duck brand stuff is a little, a little less sticky. Maybe the doll, this, this particular Dollar Tree stuff is a little bit stickier. If I could tell that the duck brand stuff is thicker, you don't have to overlap much, if at all. You just don't want to leave any sticky gaps. So make sure you at least come up to it, even if you don't overlap it. And this goes a lot quicker. If you're doing this project with kids, I would, I would probably do this part myself so that they don't uh, get kind of caught up on it. Like this can be a little tricky or, or at least get the first strip down so that you hold it down for them while they're working. Um, duct tape can be expensive. So um, I usually, you know, grab mine at the Dollar Tree. My kids do more projects than I do with the duct tape. So I, I will grab it on clearance or, you know, grab it at the Dollar Tree. That way I don't spend a ton on it and the kids still get to you, kind of use it with abandon and I'm not worried about wasting materials. So now we have this two-sided fabric. Look at that side and that side. So now we need to trim it down. And um, I would just kind of test your craft mat and see if it's going to stick it permanently. Because sometimes it is a little tricky and it it really sticks that, um, that tape down. So what I try to do is just find an area that I can tape it down where I can see my guidelines and I'm not going to lose too much. So I am going to trim off this side first because I can see my plaid is a little bit a smaller size. So I like to cut with that up to make sure that um, I'm conserving as much of that material as I can. And now you want to use a nice sharp X-Acto knife and a metal ruler. And of course this would be a project for mom and dad, or you could draw with a Sharpie and you could have somebody use safety scissors to cut it out. But this is just, it's really hard to beat that. I like to turn the entire mat when I'm cutting and I'm just going to, um, just kind of see where I can get how close I can come to the edge, but not have sticky on the border. So. I keep it stuck down and go all the way around and trim it and that way um, I don't waste any and that way I keep it square because so I'm, I'm using the grids on the mat so everything stays nice and square. You also might find that it just looks better one way than the other and that's how you determine what's going to be on your front and what's going to be on the back. Because you know sometimes you can waste a lot if you need to match up everything perfectly so I might just let it slide so I don't you know, have to rip another strip, but there we go. So that's our, that's not a lot of waste. And if you had some big weight, like big strips of waste, you could always make bookmarks with it or something. Okay. So I'm thinking that I'm going to want my, uh, the leopard print as the outside. So I'm going to determine how high I want it. I think I like it about like that. I like to have plenty of room for, um, for, you know, money to be in there. I kind of would rather have the outside fold be kind of against the grain though. So I think it's going to fold better for me if I do it this way. So then what I'm going to do is just put this on the fold, line it up on the fold like that. And then I am going to trim this. Just basically you just keep everything square as you're cutting, just like if you were, you know, doing any other sort of project. So I'm going to trim that right along. I'm just cutting off a layer here. And then I'm going to use this to make a pocket. So it's kind of nice to have a little pocket in your wallet so that you have, you know, room for, if you have a, if you have an ID card or you get a gift card, you know, I make these for the kids. So sometimes the kids have a gift card to go uh, to a store and that way they can, um, they can keep whatever they need there with them and they don't have to, uh, you know, they, they can keep money in a card and not lose anything. So I could go with a purple trim or I could go with a black trim. Um, I think I'm going to do the purple. I think the purple looks a little bit nicer. So I'm going to set this stuff aside and when I tr cut my trim, I like to do that right on the mat. So again, that's why you want to test your mat because if your duct tape is too sticky, sometimes it will like leave a bad residue on the mat. Um, and I just try to, when I stick it down, I don't press it really hard. I just try to get it tacked down to, I just try to get it lined up on one of the, um, on one of the crossbars and I will just kind of trim it off. It's a little easier that way. And I just very gently, I'm just very gently just touching it down so that it doesn't come up when I, or bunch up when I cut it. And then just hold your knife. And I like to cut one, uh, like half inch strips. 
I find that's really handy for construction. And then sometimes I do leave a bigger one because um, when I'm doing up the sides and the bottom, I like to have a little bit wider of a strip. So what I like to do first is the two edges here. So I try to just kind of keep it one, like half on and half off. I'll slide that up there so you can see. I'm also using a um, custom white balance, so hopefully everything is a decent color and not looking crazy. Doesn't have to be perfect though, so try not to fret. Sometimes I'll just trim it right off uh, like that so I can just kind of keep those scraps there. And then I just fold over the excess. And that's a good thing about using a trim that's not a really contrasting color is that if it's not absolutely even, like this is not perfectly even, um, it's not going to look too weird because it's pretty close in color. I'm going to do the same thing here. Half on, half off, or as close as I can get. That one I'm going to have to sacrifice. And then I want to do, I'm going to cut this one down a bit because I do need to have a thinner, another little strip there. And this is going to be uh, the top of the pocket so that it has a little bit of protection and also will make it um, easy for, you know, whatever you're putting in those front pockets to kind of go in and go out and not fray and not damage the edge. Just makes it a little bit nicer. I like this craft knife. This is a Fiskars. It's fairly new, but I like it because the blade doesn't come loose. And that's what I would always have with my X-Acto knives that had the little swivel, that had the barrel closure. Okay, so then what you want to do is trim any little bits of tape hanging out. So nothing should be sticky. When you're handling this, it should all be, you know, nice and feel nice and smooth and thick and lovely, but it should not be sticky. So I decided that I was going to have a leopard print on the outside, so I'm going to close that up like that. That looks pretty nice. And then I'm going to put that like that and just kind of see. It's I know it's very avant-garde. looks very 80s, doesn't it? And now I need to have another um, strip that's about as wide as this. So I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to pull out the tape. And we're doing this in real time, so you're going to know how long this is going to take you if you make one of these for your kids. All right, so it's a little bit longer to account for any... Um, any mistakes with my, you know, tape tearing. And then just gently pat it down and then you're gonna cut it, basically rip this tape in half. You could you could just rip it, but um, you know, you might get a little frayed edge or those little, you know, those little fibery strings that they have. So I just like to, um, I just like to actually, actually tape it, actually uh, cut it rather. And um, it would be quicker if you tore it, you know, just to let you know, you might waste some more though. And so here I'm going to have the taped edge. I folded my my duct tape fabric in half. So that's unfolded. I'm folding that in half so both of our finished edges are up, are meeting. I've got the leopard print on the outside, but you could do it the other way if that's what you prefer. And I'm going to put this right on top. This holds it holds its own folds really well, um, so I don't really have to, you know, do much to it. I might put a couple pieces of tape down just to weight it. And now I'm going to pull up one half of this strip that I just cut. And I am going to get it half on, half off the bottom. I'm just thinking I'm going to slide it in a little bit so that we're not in the way of the other tape that we cut. Let's get all those other things out of the way. And I think this one might be just a smidgen wider. So since this is going through thicker amounts of tape, I want to use the widest one. So I just want to have it about a half an inch on. Uh, I'm gonna try that again. I didn't. I only had about a quarter inch on that end, so I know this is a little tedious. I apologize. Actually, it's about a half an inch. I'll just line it up to just under that little seam I can see from my tape, and I think that yeah, that works pretty well. And now that I have that on, I can flip the whole thing over, and I can wrap it around. So that's gonna secure that pocket, so that our things don't fall out. So we can have our gift cards in there and whatnot. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We've got our pocket. Nothing is sealed on the side. We've got our pocket. Oh, let's clip this just so you can see what we're 
We always clip off the hanging part so that it's nice and neat. Okay, so this is our pocket and this is our bifold. This is where our money goes, like our bills go. Okay, so for this, I'm just gonna cut this in half because I wanna make sure that I don't kind of run out of space. And I'm going to go half on and half off the edge. So I'm gonna go overlap this about a half an inch because this is about an inch wide. I can kind of use my grid on my cutting mat to guide me a little bit, I think. That looks pretty even. And then I'm just gonna fold it over the back and press it down really well. I will trim that off in a second. Same thing over here. Gonna go half on, half off. Make sure that's about, that's a little crooked. You really want the front to be the, to look even, I think. So I'm just gonna go from the front. You can probably see better than I can because you're looking directly over my workspace. There, that looks pretty good. Fold it over the back. Okay, so it's obviously not equal, but you, the, the bottom line is you wanna have a nice bond so that you don't end up um, having anything, you don't want the wallet to fall apart, basically, with somebody's money in it, but I don't really think that's possible because this is pretty strong stuff. All right, now you will need to probably make a little slit right there because your tape will want to seal it shut, so then just fold over anything that you have that's sticky. And there you go, you've got a nice little wallet, just kind of fold it. That's plenty of room for some bills and you got room for gift cards in the front. Uh, I think it's really uh, a really quick and easy way to, um, you know, let a kid manage their money or even it's nice and slim so you can even use it for your own cash. You might pick, you know, patterns that you prefer, but, uh, but it's easy. You can do it with dollar store supplies or name brand duct tape. It really doesn't matter. It's a fun project and I hope you give it a try. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and until next time, happy crafting. Oh, one more thing. If you find that you don't have enough room for your gift card, which I think there's plenty of room here, you could cut a little slit right there if you need to. I don't think I need to, but there's an option if you end up making yours a little bit shorter and it's a little tight of a fit. Uh, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.